Welcome to module nine of our management accounting course. This has us looking at variance analysis. So to explain variance analysis, I'm going to give an example that is based on a true story. I have a friend named Bill and he was thinking of opening a hamburger restaurant. And one of the things he was worried about was beef. Well, he did open the hamburger restaurant. And in fact, after a few weeks in business, he said, I blew my beef budget. And as you'll know, beef is like the main ingredient in a hamburger and it's the most expensive ingredient. So he was worried, right? His whole business model was precipitated on a certain level of beef costs and he started the business and it looked like he had blown it completely. And that had him of understandably quite worried. So he knew I was an accountant. He was like, can you help me with some of the numbers? So uh, we worked together and we did some variance analysis for him to figure out what was going wrong, if anything, with his beef. And that's what this module is about. But I think this uh, personal and fairly straightforward example will give you some illustration into how it works. So uh, beef, of course, is a direct material. And again, the uh, accountant in me, the management accountant in me was thinking, OK, we are going to have some direct materials variances that we're going to have to deal with here. And so I asked him, well, what was the game plan here? Now, the, I asked him what the plan was. But of course, as an accountant, I was thinking these are what we would call standard costs. And so here was his plan. Each burger takes 200 grams of beef. Uh, if you're not familiar with metric, that's 0 0.2 kilograms of beef. Uh, and beef costs $8 per kilogram. So each burger should cost $1.60 in beef. That's that's the number that was kind of triggering him. He's like, each burger is supposed to cost $1.60, and he was spending more than $1.60 in burger, uh, burger in beef, as we will soon see. So uh, this goes on. What actually happened? Well, I purchased 20 kilograms of beef for $7.50 per kilogram. So that's $150 worth of beef, 20 times $7.50. I used 19 kilograms of beef and made and sold 80 burgers. And so this is what kind of, this is early days for him, just his first, you know, 80 burgers. Uh, he wants help. He says, you know, making 80 burgers is supposed to cost 80 times 1.6, you know, this number up here. Uh, it should cost me 128, but I spent 150. And you might think these are small numbers. You know, he's only over by 22 bucks. What's the big deal? But of course, this is his main thing. And if his main thing, he's blowing the budget. A lot of his projections are just going to go out the window. So he's, I think, justifiably, justifiably worried. And so he's asking me for a little bit of help. And I thought, well, this is a great situation for variance analysis and we can get to the bottom of what's causing uh, the issue. So uh, here's how we do a variance analysis. Uh, and I, I use these little tables. So we'll start with this one. I'm going to just bring it over. Uh oh, had it all ready to go. I thought this is going to save me time and it's probably costing me time. Uh, in any event. Uh, so we'll start with his purchases, right? Did he blow the budget by making bad purchases? So let's start there with his purchases. So what did he actually purchase? Now, now here's the, the way this little variance table works and you'll see me fill it in. I think it'll help. AQ stands for actual quantity. That's the, again, when we're talking about materials, we're talking about grams, kilograms, pounds, liters, ounces, you know, these types of units of measure is what's going in here. The actual quantity of beef purchased. Okay, what was the actual quantity of beef purchased? Well, we're worried about what actually happened. Again, AQ, the A stands for actual. So the actual quantity of beef purchased was 20. AP is the actual price paid per unit, per kilogram in this case. So the actual price paid per kilogram was 750. AQ times AP is just the actual amount you paid for your raw material, whatever that material was. In this case, it was beef in the burger. So again, 20 kilograms times 750 per kilogram gives us $150 actually spent on the beef. Okay, the other prong says, okay, given the actual quantity, so given the actual quantity was uh, 20 kilograms, that's the actual quantity purchased. What if I if I told Bill before the month started, before he started work, how much he would have thought he'd have spent? And to do it, we use something called the SP, the standard price. So I told him before the period he was going to buy 20 kilograms of beef. Uh, how much would it have cost? He would have said, well, it would cost 20 times eight because that's his cost per kilogram. He thinks 
beef costs eight dollars a kilogram according to his plan so 20 times 8 is 160 the difference here between 160 and 150 is ten dollars now that's the variance now we've computed a variance the name of this variance is the direct materials price variance and with every variance we need to say if it's a good variance or a bad variance except for we're fancy accountants we don't say good variance or bad variance we use very specific jargon here we say is the variance favorable or unfavorable favorable gets an f unfavorable gets a u again favorable means good unfavorable means bad so just looking at this in a vacuum obviously there's some bad news for bill but looking at this in a vacuum was the price variance favorable or unfavorable well it's favorable he saved money he thought he was supposed to spend eight dollars per kilogram he spent 750 this is good news this is a favorable variant so i'm just going to mark that with an f so his direct materials price variance is ten dollars favorable but that's not the only variance. There's also other causes of this, and we're gonna get into direct materials he used. Now, obviously, I think we're headed for some bad news, but let's see how we do. So in terms of direct materials used, uh, we take actual quantity times standard price. Now you might think, oh, I just take this same number. No, 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 because the direct materials purchased is different from the direct materials used. He purchased 20 kilograms, but he only used 19 of them. So we take actual quantity used, 19 kilograms, times standard price. Oops, I put an underline there. I don't know why. Let's try again. Oh, my goodness, things are falling apart. Control Z. There we go. Uh, actual quantity uh, used was 19 kilograms. Now I'm worried uh, my American audience is going to, it'll be revealed I'm a Canadian. I said control Z instead of control Z. Uh, 19 kilograms. The standard price per kilogram is $8. 19 times 8 is 152. 19 times 8 is 152. Okay. So that's that prong. The final prong is probably the trickiest of the bunch standard quantity times standard price our standard price remains eight the standard quantity we need to answer this question given the actual output in this case the actual number of burgers made how much direct material should should have been used so given the fact that i made how many burgers 80 burgers how much material should have been used well we know our standard quantity was 200 grams per burger or 0 0.2 kilograms per burger so given that i made 80 burgers and burgers are supposed to take 0 0.2 kilograms it should have taken 80 times 0 0.2 uh, that is 16 kilograms of beef okay so 16 kilograms of beef times 8, 16 times 8, 48, uh, 128. Okay, so what's the difference here? 152 minus 128. The difference is $24. Is this variance favorable or unfavorable? Well, the, the price is the same between the two, but the quantity is different. I used 19 kilograms to do work that should have taken 16 kilograms. This is an unfavorable variance i overused the beef this is a direct materials quantity variance so once bill and i had gotten to the bottom of this uh and i said okay well you were right you blew the budget you know you spent you overspent now he, he had sort of overrated the overspending he thought he was 22 dollars unfavorable overall indeed if you combine these two variants he's only 14 dollars 
unfavorable. What's the difference? Well, he's still got a kilogram of beef. That hasn't blown the budget. He's still got uh, some beef left over here. Um, but this is unfavorable. Now, he got a good price. So it wasn't down to price. Either maybe he got the good price because he got lower quality beef and used more, or maybe it was that they spoiled some. Maybe he, you know, he's learning how. Maybe he had to throw some beef in the garbage because he overcooked or undercooked some burgers or had some customers send it back and he had to make a new burger with fresh beef. Uh, or yeah, it could be a lower standard of beef. But the issue here isn't the price. The issue here is he's using more beef than he planned to. So a few options. One, he can just change the budget. He can say, you know what, I'm actually using 250 grams of beef. Or two, he can change something in the kitchen. Maybe it's not him, maybe it's an employee, but somebody is not using the beef as efficiently as they should be. There's a direct materials quantity variance. We've gotten to the bottom of it. And again, the, the number seems small, but if you're just starting a new business and you're blowing your budget, you're worried. And Bill was worried. All right, well, I hope you don't worry too much. How's that for a segue as we work through uh, this module on variance analysis? We're going to learn material, labor, and overhead variances, and I hope you'll stay with me. Talk to you soon, everybody. Have a great day. Bye for now.